Hey guys, how you doing? It's Thursday. I thought I'd uh, get ready to uh, bake a cake, hummingbird cake, as I've talked about now for the last couple of weeks, and I uh, thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride. Um, <clears throat> sounds like a really good cake. Uh, before I forget, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button if you want to. That's completely up to you. I'm not um, horribly uh, into the whole. I don't plan on ever monetizing. I don't plan on, uh, you know, becoming rich and famous on YouTube. Um, but if you're new, um, welcome. Glad to glad you found me. Um, if you're coming back for more, <laughs> you're glutton for punishment. But I'm glad you're here all the same. Um, so anyhow, hummingbird cake. So the thing behind this cake is, is its sweetness, even though it's not horribly, horribly sweet, but it's said to be so sweet it attracts hummingbirds, hence the name hummingbird cake. But we're going to make one anyhow. I uh, hope you caught the video yesterday with the, uh, all the canning we did. Um, right there is our fruits of labor and uh, pickles, four different types of jam. Uh, getting ready to do a couple more types today. Uh, Chris is, as a matter of fact, if you don't know who Chris is, Chris is my wife of almost 20 years. Um, we also have three daughters and a son, and they pop in and out sporadically. At least two of my daughters do because they still live at home. Uh, our two oldest are no longer living with us. But that being said, all right, so hummingbird cake. Let's uh, look at the ingredients. As always, uh, when I try anything new, I write it down in a notebook. If we like it, I send it over to uh, the uh, recipe box. So, uh, to make the cake, we're going to make the cake and the icing today. It's got a uh, wonderful cream cheese icing on it. Um, but right now, I'm just going to go over the cake, uh, what we need to actually make the cake. Tools you will need. Um, some basic tools. You don't need a stand mixer to make the cake itself. You don't need, even need a regular mixer. We're not going to use anything but a whisk today. What's a whisk? A whisk. A couple of spatulas. We're going to need a couple of bowls, good sized bowls. And the most important thing ever, a scale. Now, while you're getting your ingredients together, turn your oven on 350 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which is like 180 degrees Celsius, I believe. And... You also want to get two nine-inch uh, cake pans, two nine-inch cake pans. I lined mine with parchment paper. You don't have to, but it's helpful. It helps keep the cake from sticking to the bottom or potentially sticking to the bottom. But you'll want to uh, line. You want to line them with parchment paper, and you'll want to coat them with something unless you have non-stick pans. Um, you can coat them with butter, vegetable spray. Even with non-stick pans, I still have a tendency to put a light coating of uh, vegetable spray on them like those did, parchment paper on the bottom. And all I did was just take a square piece of parchment paper out of a roll, stick the pan down on top of it, draw a circle around the outside of it, and cut on the inside of the line, set it down in there, voila, parchment paper for a round pan. All right, ingredients. Let's start with the dry ingredients, because that's what we're gonna do first. So, I tell you what, here's how we're gonna work this. I'm gonna bring the camera down, and as I combine, I'll tell you what we have. All right, so let me get you moved down here. Sorry about that, that was a quick drop, wasn't it? Got that going on, there we are. First thing we're gonna need is three cups, 350 grams of all-purpose flour, okay? To that, we're gonna add, here comes the sweetness, uh, two cups, 400 grams of just all-purpose flour, Kind you find sitting on the skid in the baking aisle. Um, just regular white granulated sugar. So we're gonna put that in there next. Now normally in a cake, the sugar is actually a wet ingredient, but with this cake, it's a dry ingredient. So the next thing we're gonna need is one teaspoon, which is about six grams of baking soda. All right, we're just gonna put that in there. This is a really easy cake. It, it, I mean, it looks like it has a lot of ingredients, but it doesn't. You're gonna need a half a teaspoon of salt right there. Now, when it comes to salt, we use uh, kosher salt. If you use kosher salt, it usually comes in big grains. It, it doesn't seem to overpower, okay? So, you, but it comes in big grains, so you're gonna to wanna to kinda of 
smush in your fingers as you uh, put it up to break up the grains. If not, you will get a clump of guaranteed a big flake of salt left over. We're going to put that in there. Somehow my salt got wet. That's all right. And then the last thing we're going to need for our dry ingredients, well, saying the last thing we're going to need for our dry ingredients is uh, three grams of cinnamon right there. All right. So the next thing we need to add, this will be the very last thing for the dry ingredients is a half a cup of chopped pecans. Now, I'm going to show you how to chop these up right quick because it's, it's not hard to do. And what I did was, uh, earlier this morning, I grabbed uh, a little over a cup because we're going to need pecans in a couple different places, places half cup split. Um, and I roasted them. I roasted them by putting them in the oven at 350 degrees. And I let them go for about about eight to 10 minutes maybe. So you, you, you'll know when they're done, when you uh, smell it, you'll be able to smell them. Okay, so we're gonna take a half a cup right there and we're gonna chop these up pretty solid. Uh, you know, it, the ingredients calls for fine pecans, fine chopped pecans, but realistically you make them how you want. Now to chop up your pecans, you're just gonna simply Bring your knife in here, but it's important you keep your hand on the top of the blade right here. That's that helps with your control. You know, I mean, your ultimate control is in your dominant hand that's holding the handle. But we're just going to chop them up real good. Like I said, as fine as you want. I mean, make it, you, you want to make this cake your own. So we get these chopped up. Yeah, right quick. Plus, when you toast them, it makes them easier to chop. All right, got those finally chopped up. We're going to put those in there. So this cake has a lot of flavors that go together, I believe, well. All right, so that's our dry ingredients. The last thing we have to do with our dry ingredients, which is easy, is just whisk it together. Okay. All right, we got it whisked together good. And that's important. You want to, uh, you don't want clumps of the baking soda or the salt in there. Uh, it'll give you a bitter taste or a salty taste just in one bite. And you don't want that. All right, give me one second. I got to pause for a moment and I will uh, come back and we'll do wet ingredients. Okay, so moving on. Now we're going to do our wet ingredients. Wet ingredients are pretty easy. You're going to need uh, two cups of bananas. Bananas. Uh, now, two cups is about two to three medium bananas, you know, uh, depending on their size. And you want your bananas to be uh, ripened. Okay, so like when you go to the store, most of the time you get bananas that are um, bright yellow, you know, fresh and green. Um, that is not ripened. This is ripened. Uh, just like you're making banana bread, this is the type of banana you want. This means the sugars have started to just go nuts in here and it, it becomes very sweet. Um, that banana, most people would say, oh, that banana is no good because it's brown. Well, that's not true. Um, that actually is it, probably the sweetest that banana will get. Now, they will eventually ripen and turn to mush, but and you don't want that. But what you're going to do is you're going to take your bananas and just mash them up with a fork. It's okay if they're still a little chunky, but you want them mashed up. You can use... A processor or your immersion blender if you have one just be careful because you will liquefy them quick um, and then they'll be like water and they, then, then it just uh, it serves no purpose all right so the next thing we're gonna need on top of that is three eggs and when I'm using large eggs they're about 50 grams a piece about 150 grams in eggs uh, the bananas is like right around 400 grams I believe uh, yeah right around 400 grams 
So, uh, but it's two cups worth of bananas or two to three medium bananas, depending on the size of your bananas. All right, so we got our three large eggs in there. The next thing we're gonna add is a can of crushed pineapple, eight ounce can of crushed pineapple. You're not gonna drain it, you're just gonna put it all right in there, juice, pineapples, everything. So you got all that banana and all that pineapple in there, it's gonna be crazy good. One and a half teaspoons, six grams of vanilla. Toss her on in there. And then the last thing you're gonna need, since we're not using butter, we're using oil. Now, the thing with oil versus butter, and it's three quarters a cup, is we can actually put this cake in the fridge and it'll maintain its moisture. Because it doesn't have butter in it, butter will cause your cakes to stiffen up and firm it up in the fridge. So, but without it, we use the uh, oil instead, it'll uh, let it stay moist and fresh. It'll just stay cold. So now we're just going to mix all that together with a whisk. And like I said, the beauty of this cake so far is you don't have to have any big tools. You just need a whisk and a spatula or two. Yeah, I mean, if you only got one special, one special will work. And we're going to mix this together. So it looks like, looks like that. You know, you got a nice wet batter. So, and we're almost done with this cake. It's been like, what, eight minutes, nine minutes? Let's look at the time. About oh, 10 minutes. We're going to mix that in. It probably hasn't even really been 10 minutes because I spent the first couple minutes talking. So... Quick, easy cake. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do, is we're just gonna make a well in the middle of our batter, or in the middle of our dry. We're gonna pour our wet in there. A well, by the way, is just a, a hole in the center. You're gonna move some of the dry to the, all the dry in the center to the edges, and that creates a hole, which then you can pour your wet ingredients into, and then we're just gonna mix this up. So you want to get it incorporated. You can do this with a hand mixer. You can do this with your stand mixer if you want. Just be careful you don't over mix it. Because what happens with you over mix is you uh, have a tendency to make your cakes turn out stiff. You know, they, they, they won't be tender and delicious. They'll be a, you know, a little dense. And, and we don't want dense. We want tender, moist, yeah, and I know some people hate that word, but I absolutely love that word. It's like the best description of a cake or a brownie. Yeah, you, know, you, you want it to be good. Yeah, you know, and this gives you the chance to look in here and make sure you got it all incorporated together well. Hands down. All right, I think we're in good shape. I mean, we're almost done with making the cake. All, you know, all it's left to do now is put it in the pans and uh, take it from there and put it in the oven. So, and I'm pretty sure I mentioned it at the beginning of this video, but if I didn't, you wanna be preheating your oven to 350 degrees, okay? So basically, if you go to roast your pecan, or toast your pecans in the, in the oven, you're gonna toast them at 350 degrees, like I said, for about six to eight minutes, or until you smell them. Just leave the oven on. You know, uh, that way you know it's good and heated up, it's it's rotated, you know, it's rotated through its heating cycle a couple, two, three times, and you got good solid heating. All right, right there is our batter. Pretty cool, huh? You know, easy, great beginner cake. You know, for being, uh, having a, a few extra parts to it, so to speak, this really is a good cake. It's a good first cake to make. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, and your scale's gonna come into play with this. Let me uh, move you down just a hair more. There we go. So that way you can see what I'm doing, is we're gonna take this batter and we're gonna mix it, and we're gonna put half in each pan. Now, you can, you can eyeball this. If you don't have a scale, which if you don't have a scale, I highly recommend you get one. Um, scales, when it comes to baking, and even some cooking applications, uh, are, are pretty necessary. You know, you want it to, you know, you want to be as accurate as possible. It creates consistency. You know, like with these pans here, with these pies here, cake pies, pans, cakes, um, 
we're going to want to make them as, you know, way the same, you know, and, and get it as close as possible. So that way when it's in the oven, they cook the same, or they bake the same. I'll tell you, I can't get my foot out of my mouth this morning. So what we'll do is, we're going to take our scale, and we're going to turn it on. You know, now, if per se you're not using the same, like I have the same pan for both. If you're not using the same pan, weigh your pans out first so you have an idea of where you're at. So you got 955 on that one. And I can tell you this one's going to weigh more. Yep, and not a whole lot more, but a little bit more. We'll get some of this out of here. Take a little bit more out of this one. Try to get them at a thousand fifty each. All right, we are in good shape. Good shape. Uh, get my offset spatula here. Put that in there. And we're just going to kind of even this out, make sure everything's even. Yeah, that's that's kind of important. All right, so we got our pans together. All that's left to do is put them in the oven. That's it. That's all. We're good to go. So, how long do we put these in the oven for? We're going to put them in the oven at 350 degrees, 25 to 30 minutes. Now that being said. Your oven is probably a little different than mine. You know, I guarantee it's a little different than mine. You know, no oven is the same. My 350 may not be your 350. You know, uh, to check the accuracy of your oven, they make oven uh, thermometers that you can hang in your oven that uh, will tell you what it reads out when you have, when you set it on 350, if it reads 350, then your oven's really 350. But start checking it at about 20 minutes. You know, and you want to check it by uh, you can put a toothpick in the center yeah that's always a good sign if it comes out clean all right I'm gonna put these in here while I talk uh, toothpick comes out clean in the center you should be able to touch the top and it should be spongy it should have some bounce back to it you know it's always a good thing all right so 25 to 30 minutes I'm gonna do mine for 25 um, I know my oven well enough to know that it will at least be on the lower end of the time to be done, but I will start checking it at 20 minutes. And so, and then after I'm done checking it, I pull it out, test it, make sure it's good. Uh, I'm gonna bring them out and I'm gonna let them cool for about 10 minutes. So when I come back, uh, we will uh, check them out and uh, get them out of the pan and move on to making the icing. All right, see you in just one second. All right, so we uh, <clears throat> let the cake bake. It actually took 27 minutes. Uh, I started at 25 when I uh, toothpicked it. It uh, was still just a little, little crumbly, but not bad. So remember, when you pull your when you pull your toothpick out, a lot of people will tell you it should come out completely clean, and and that's the goal to look for. But if it if you pull it out and it's got just a few crumbs on it, it it's okay. Um, it, it, you can still call it finished. Um, the reason being is as it cools, it's still cooking. It's, it's still baking as it's sitting on the cooling rack, um, even in the pan. As it doesn't come out of the oven, automatically go from 350 degrees to room temperature. That doesn't happen. It takes time to cool. Well, while it's cooling, it's still baking on the inside. So I'm going to show you how... Uh, uh, how to how to take them out of the pan um it's really easy but i'm gonna show you um so let me get you down here to where we can and then we'll go over the list of ingredients for the icing um the icing is really easy okay so 
All you gotta do, just to make sure it's, you know, not sticking anywhere on the side of the pan, you'll you run a knife, offset spatula. I have an offset spatula, so I'm using it. So we wanna run that around there. If you have something to put this onto, uh, like another rack or whatever, to hold it, I don't, I just use my hand. All right, so see, came right out. Good enough, put that, go ahead and put that in the sink. Pull your parchment paper off. See how it didn't stick, turned out really nice. And then just set it on the uh, rack to finish cooling. You get this parchment paper thrown away. All right, so we're gonna move the uh, parchment, we're gonna move the cakes over to the table to let them finish cooling. And while they're finishing cooling, we're gonna make some icing. All right, there we go. All right, first things you'll need uh, tool-wise. Now, I am using a uh, stand mixer for the icing. You can use a hand mixer. Uh, I suppose if you had strong enough arms, you could even do this with just a whisk. But I don't want to work harder. Remember, work smarter, not harder. So if you have a stand mixer, paddle attachment. If you're just using a hand, mix hand mixer, it's going to take a little longer, but that's all right. Um, and if I, stand mixers are expensive, and I get it. Not everybody has one. Hand mixers have been around forever and a day, also common in a household. If you don't have one, pick one up. They're like 30, 40 bucks. You know, they're not horribly expensive and they're a good investment because you can use them for several things. All right, so this is pretty much the only tool you'll need besides a spatula. Yeah, and, and that's pretty much it. What's in your spatula? Okay, so ingredients as we go along. You will need a quarter cup of butter right there which is a half a stick and these are at room temperature and you will need an eight ounce block you know just a package of cream cheese of your choice uh doesn't matter who's what whoever's cream cheese you like so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to throw that butter in the stand mixer now i don't plug my stand mixer in as you just saw i was plugging it in until i absolutely need it i have found with kitchen equipment and having children um leaving it unplugged to the last minute is a good idea Kids like to come by and press knobs and pull but push buttons and yeah, or press knobs, press buttons and, and pull knobs. Um, and that can get them hurt. It can, you know, turn the equipment on when you don't want it to come on. So wait, wait till the last minute, plug it in. It's a good practice to get into. Even if you don't have kids now, you may have kids down the road. So what we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is just cream this butter, you know, and by creaming, I mean, we're going to take it from that block and just turn it into a cream. Um, which won't take long because it's at room temperature. I mean, it literally went that quick. Um, by creaming, I'll show you. Since I remember to unplug it or under the lock. If you look in there, see how it's, it, it looks like cream now? It doesn't look like a, it doesn't look like a stick anymore. We're gonna go ahead and add our cream cheese in there, the entire block. And we're going to incorporate those two together. Okay, we have creamed the cream cheese even more than it already was. And then the next thing we're going to do is add one tablespoon of vanilla, which is uh, four grams. And we're going to scoop down our, scrape down our sides real quick. Looks like I got, it's combined, but a lot of it's on the sides. Yeah, when you're mixing, whether it's a stand mixer, a hand mixer, or just a whisk, you know, you want to, it's always a good idea to take a second and run your sides down. Bye, honey. You have fun today. Sarah's off to stay tonight with her aunt, and then she's going to Cedar Point, America's roller coast, uh, tomorrow morning, and have some fun with the with the fam. Uh, unfortunately, I have to work, so I can't go. Um, so we're gonna mix that vanilla in there. Good. 
Got the vanilla mixed in. Took a whole whopping 30 seconds. This is really a very easy icing to make. All right, so now what we got left to put in, we got two things left to put in. We got one pound of powdered sugar or confectionery sugar. Um, with powdered sugar, you want to use a sifter, sifter, to, to put it in with, and you want to use your scale to weigh it. Um, I know we buy our powdered sugar in two pound bags, so I just simply weigh it out. I put it in the sifter, sift it through, and weigh it out. If you don't have a sifter, you can use a strainer, you know, just like this. Yeah, although sifters aren't expensive. They're like five bucks. You can buy one. Good investment. And what, but we're not going to add this in all at once. What we're going to do is we're going to put it in a little bit at a time. If, you know, we'll, we'll split it into the thirds, possibly even fourths. Because uh, what happens is, much like with flour, you put that all in there at once, you will uh, have a face full and a room full of powdered sugar. We're going to start this. We're just going to incorporate it on low is all we're looking to do. Start on low, and then you can bring it up a little bit. But like I said, you want to watch how fast you take it, or you'll end up with a face full of sugar. Which might sound cool, but in reality, it's not. Especially when it hits the back of your throat. I mean, not that I have ever personally done anything like that, because, you know, I'm perfect. Just kidding. Um, so we'll put a little more in there. And we'll get it mixed. Okay, I'm gonna finish mixing this up. When we come back, I'll tell you what to do next. Okay, so I got my powdered sugar in there. And if you look, we've got we've got our icing, but it's really kind of dense. Um, and it is a dense icing. I, Cream cheese icing is dense by nature, but what we're going to do now, and this is kind of the last step before we ice our cake, is go ahead and I'm going to let this run on medium, medium high speed for about two, three minutes, and we're going to try to incorporate some air into it. You want to get it nice and fluffy, you know, and, and airy, um, and smooth, and rich, and all that good stuff, but to get that air incorporated in there, we need to mix it for a few minutes. All right, so when I come back after mixing this here for a few minutes, we'll go ahead and start getting our cakes together. All right, I'll see you in just one bill. All right, so I went ahead and got it mixed. One thing I did forget to mention, and it, not that it's horribly important, but it's kind of important, was the other half a cup of pecans, uh, finely chopped pecans. Those go in the icing also, which I did put in there before I started mixing it uh, for a few minutes. But remember how kind of dense it was prior to? Yeah, I mean, now it's nice and uh, smooth and aerated. I mean, it almost doubled the icing. And that's what you're looking for. Give me one second to get this cleaned off, and I'll, I'll show you how our icing looks. So right there is our icing. It, uh, let's see how it's got that nice, smooth, creamy, almost like a great mashed potato look. Um, and that's exactly what we're looking for. All right, so let me get this stand mixer out of the way here. And we'll uh, move on to getting some cakes iced. We're getting a cake iced. Yeah, that's the. And then we'll be into the final stages, the running of the, the final run of it all, last lap, so to speak. Get this out of the way. And then we're going to bring our cakes over. So when it comes to icing your cakes, so you got nice and solid cake. Put your first one down, and then we're going to put some icing on top of that and smear it. When you go to put your top one down, I'll show you here in a second. Let's go ahead. You want to get take about a quarter to a third of your icing and put it on the center there. And we're just going to smooth it out. Um, and you can take it all the way to the edge because. We're going to ice the outside of the cake also, so that's okay, you know, if it's there. 
and then we'll use the spatula for this part and then yeah I'm gonna go to an offset spatula to do uh, the sides I mean if you don't have an offset spatula you can use just your spatula it's okay yeah and when it comes to the top yeah, depending on what you're looking for, um, professionals will take the top and they'll like cut the hill out of it, the the dome out of it, or they'll just flip it over. Um, I, I personally uh, don't want to work that hard at it, and that and I like the way it looks. I like a homemade cake look, so. I am personally not going to flip this one over. I'm just going to let it run for what it is. We'll take this one here. And we'll stick it on top. We'll just kind of smush it down a little bit. Then we can get this rack out of the way. And then we'll take the rest of our icing. Put it on top here as such. Get that a little more centered. There we go. Sorry, I guess I can get that out of the way completely. Right, let me wipe my hands off real quick, get the icing off of them. And then we can just take our offset spatula. Bring it on around, and we'll just ice the sides of the cake. Bring it all over the top, like such. Now, I want you to keep in mind, I show you these things not because I'm a professional baker, by any means. I'm not. I am a guy who likes to bake. Yeah, there's a big difference. I don't do this for a living. I've never taken classes. Yeah, I didn't grow up baking cakes. I just found a love for making cakes and pies and cookies and other things. Yeah, so, yeah, my cakes don't ever come out looking perfect. Yeah, well, I mean, sometimes they do. Sometimes I get lucky. Yeah, as I say, the sun shines on a dog's butt every once in a while. But, yeah, we want to, yeah, you want to make an attempt. Practice makes perfect. The better you, the more often you do it, the better you get. Yeah, now, on some cakes, they'll do a, what's called a crumb coat which is nothing more than a light coat of icing around it. And what it does is it catches the, you know, any loose cake parts. But on this cake, it would be hard to do a crumb coat because we put the pecans in the icing. And it would just inevitably tear up the cake as you went along and you'd have a bunch of crumbs. At least that's what I think. Now, I could be completely wrong about that. But I don't think I am. Get some of that smeared over this way. Oop. As I get icing on the counter. Icing on the edge here. We are about in good shape. Just smooth down a little bit. Now to smooth out the sides, you can just take your offset spatula or your knife, kind of hold it at an angle, and just run it around. If you have a cake stand, cake stands are even better. Yeah, what a cake stand is, is that it's, it's like a pedestal and it, uh, you know, set up 
and the top spins. I don't have one. And you can just put your cake on that. Uh, and they come with a lid, so that way you can keep your cake on, you know, keep your cake on the pedestal to serve. All right. And I think the last thing we're going to do, I mean, this could be done right now, is I'm going to take a towel here and clean up the edges of my plate so I don't continue to get a bunch of shenanigans on me. Is I'm going to grab some of my pecans, keep them in mason jars. Uh, there is a, a Amish store uh, right by our house that has uh, that sells bulk nuts, and I'm here to tell you, it's uh, some of the best stuff ever and very reasonably priced. And we're just going to sit these on here, like such. Give it a little pizzazz. All right. And there we are. There is a hummingbird cake in its finest. All right. Well, give me just a few seconds, and when I come back, uh, we will uh, cut into that and taste it and see how it tastes. All right. I'll see you here in just one second. Okay. So, sorry about that. I had family come by to take care of a phone issue real quick. Uh, my mother-in-law, bless her heart, locked herself out of her phone. All right. So, we got the cake done. We're looking good. Yeah. It is, like I said, an absolutely beautiful cake, I think. You know, could I sell it at market? Uh, maybe, maybe. People like homemade things. Uh, but that being said, I'm not selling it at market. I'm going to eat it. So let me find my knife, uh, which I used for chopping. Hold on for me one second. Okay, so uh, my buddy Donnie uh, lives across the street, just stopped by, and. Uh, Brought us, a, and I'll show it to you probably in the next video, but a uh, really old uh, grass sickle, uh, which is kind of cool for well, how to uh, mow the grass basically back in the day. And uh, stopped by for a visit, but now we are uninterrupted, got the mother-in-law out of the way, friends out of the way for the moment, but you never interrupt a friend. Friends are important. Yeah, want to keep them around. So now we're going to try this cake. So I'll cut us a nice little piece here. And this is, uh, my understanding, a very rich cake. I have never made this before, so I don't know. But we're going to get us a little slice of heaven here and find out. I know it looks fantastic. And, you know, not that I can condone eating cake batter um, because it's got raw eggs in it. So you should, I will tell you that you should never do that. Um, the cake batter tasted really good, that being said. All right. Now this is still kind of warm and you know fuzzy on the inside and i can tell you the icing tastes delicious but there is our cake in its fame and glory so we will uh try a piece while we got it i bet you it tastes great and chris will probably want a piece here shortly she's busy working today or she'd have been in the video with us uh, that and she's she's still a little camera shy. We're we're working her in. I think you'll see more of her in the days to come. But meanwhile, let's uh let's give this a shot. Oh, I can already tell it's it's moist as all get out. Uh, just by cutting it. Holy cow. I mean, you can taste the banana, the pineapple, the pecans, you know, where we roast, toasted them in the oven in the beginning. That, my friends, is an amazing cake. Hands down, just an amazing cake. 
I need another little piece there. Especially with that, that cream cheese frosting. So, wow, that's just really good cake. Try this recipe. I, I, I really don't think you'll be disappointed at all. That is a moist, tender, delicious, well-balanced, not overly sweet for all the sugars we have in it. It really is not overly sweet at all. It has so much flavor. Very impressed with this cake. Very impressed. All right. Um, that being said, I will let you get back to your day. Uh, if you try this cake, which I hope you do, uh, let me know. Leave me a comment down below. I like to hear from you guys as often as I possibly can. Um, or if you want to talk about it, you can find me on Facebook under Brian's Aquatics. Uh, I'll probably be putting a picture of this on Instagram before it's said and done uh, with the cake slice taken out because that's just the way it's going to be now because I cut it. And uh, you, can leave me, you can find me there. I'm under Mr. Smith's Kitchen on Instagram. Um, or shoot me a message on Messenger. So either way it goes, uh, let me know. Uh, if you liked it, let me know. Uh, if you thought it was a horrible cake, which I, if you do, then you just don't have taste buds. But if you did, uh, let me know. Be like, Brian, that was a horrible cake. Why did you even bother showing us how to make that? You know, but I, I really think you'll, uh, you'll enjoy this cake, hands down. Okay, well, I'm going to go finish my piece of cake and then start uh, water changes on the fish tanks. So I love you. I love you very much. Um, tell somebody else you love them and love them very much. It'll make their day a whole lot better, I promise. Yeah? And I will talk to you later. See you next week for more adventures. All right. Bye.